Hello, gang. We're talking about digital advertising. And in this particular lecture, it's going to be covering social media networks, top lining, how they're all different, and diving further into some tips and strategies around content and how to create content for your sites. You see your learning objectives up above. So understand the difference between the social media networks and have a baseline understanding of which social media network is best for different target audiences and products and also how the different content strategies can be used to engage with different target audiences so we got a lot to talk about less slides than the last one i promise and i'll move through this pretty quickly here we go this slide gives you some numbers on just how vast social media is being used by all of us so you can see the number of emails and youtube videos that are uploaded every day and these numbers are a couple years old so our lives have become digitized and we are all out there on the digital space i remember watching ready player one with my sons and i don't think we're that far off from having that kind of experience where <laughs> Um, our online and digitized experience uh, consumes more of our lives than the actual physical realm that we live in. So um, it's a great tool with lots of advantages for marketers. It certainly has some downsides. It's distracting. It's addicting. We use it too much. It keeps us from being able to focus. It creates a lot of anxiety in society as people try to keep up on their social media uh, presence. But for marketers, it's a brand new tool. It gives us lots of ability to really laser target in to certain customers, and it's still not that expensive. So let's look at some of the different platforms. So before we start talking about the different types of social media platforms and how they're different, uh, it's interesting. It's worth noting how they perform differently social media versus traditional media, which we were talking about last week. Traditional media, in many respects, is actually easier to execute. It takes less time. You certainly have to come up with a budget. You have to pick a media vehicle. and But once you do that and, and, and provide the campaign, you know, the creative elements, whether it's radio copy or a TV commercial or a print ad, but once you hand that over to the, to the media channel, the media platform, there's really not much more you have to do. The ad runs and you get your results. Social media is the exact opposite. The, it's pretty easy to set up a Facebook page. It doesn't cost a lot of money and you can start testing some ads. But the ongoing maintenance of your execution of that platform is very time consuming. You have to feed the content beast with regular updates and posts and pictures and videos. And that's just one platform, there's many. So the back end on social media is much more time consuming than the back end on traditional media. So less planning, more behind the scenes maintenance and execution. Okay, so let's talk about some of the social media platforms. And you all are probably younger than me, so you're probably much more versed in these than I am. I'm not very huge on social media. I like to be off the grid as much as possible. Um, but obviously, you know, I do use Facebook. And I do have some of these accounts set up for working purposes. Um, but I don't use them very actively. So... You know, if we look at some of these and how they're different going from the bottom up, LinkedIn obviously is for business. This is now like your digital Rolodex and where you keep your resume. And businesses are, are starting to use LinkedIn, you know, to uh, certainly if you're a consulting firm and you want to be a subject matter expert, you're going to be posting a lot on LinkedIn. Pinterest, Pinterest is predominantly used by women, um, but it's a high visual medium. So if you're an artist or if you do um, closet redesigns and have, you know, kind of do-it-yourself projects and things like that, you're going to be on Pinterest. Uh, you know, food, it's a high visual medium and it tends to use those types of folks. So <clears throat> uh, Twitter is kind of the cocktail party of the Internet. News, short information, what's happening now. 
And we've seen our president use Twitter to great success to speak to his base and circumvent the media, the traditional media. Snapchat, you know, they recently changed their interface. I'm not a Snapchatter, but I know that uh, they lost a fair amount of people and their, their market value went down significantly. But Snapchat is still popular amongst young folks and it's got some great stuff with, you know, being able to do local area ads and have the geography piece work. Instagram, Instagram pictures and hashtags, uh, you know, uh, Pinterest is going to be more male. Instagram is, is, I'm sorry, Pinterest is more female. Instagram is going to be more male. And then obviously YouTube videos. Businesses have figured out that they can use YouTube a lot uh, to handle customer service and training issues, tutorials on how to use products. Uh, even place their commercials on YouTube to get additional life out of their media buy. Um, they've been using YouTube like that uh, for quite a while. And then the big one, Facebook. Facebook coming up with a lot of new, constantly new tools. And they've built a very efficient machine. So they now have Facebook Live, so you can broadcast directly uh, and, and have live video on your Facebook page, which has much higher engagement. And uh, you know, so that shows up with way much greater uh, engagement when people see you have a live uh, Facebook post going. Um, and they're also doing Facebook Watch, which allows uh, uh, business pages to have a looping video as their page, where the first thing you see is a looping video. So watch out. Facebook isn't slowing down. I think regulation is going to be coming in. We've seen Congress with Facebook having to testify and the social media platforms being under tighter scrutiny. Traditional media has been regulated for quite some time, and they have some constraints on what they can and cannot advertise. Social media platforms have been largely unregulated, meanwhile becoming these huge media juggernauts with huge budgets. And... Now we're seeing Congress starting to uh, clamp down and pay attention to the social media platforms given the Russian meddling with the recent election. And really, still no clear way how that is. There's no guarantee that that couldn't happen again. So we'll see more scrutiny and probably some regulation coming down for the traditional social media platforms. Stay tuned. Okay, the other thing I failed to mention on the previous slide, top lining the different social media platforms. You saw a bar uh, graph there that showed the number of users on Facebook by age categories. Two thirds of adults in the US are on Facebook. So 18 and under, less on Facebook, but it's still used very heavily. Another thing to consider about social media platforms is that you wanna be native. And that uh, there's a wonderful book called Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk, and he's a, a social media consultant. And he talks about that you want to use each social media platform and provide and put content on each platform that fits that platform. So if you're on Twitter, you know, it's going to be news oriented and kind of gossipy, like, you know, it's the cocktail party of the Internet. And if it's Pinterest, it's going to be really sexy, glamorous photos. It's going to be fashion. It's going to be makeup. It's going to be, you know, glamorous photos of food. Uh, very high high quality imagery. That's what people look for on Pinterest. Um, YouTube, it's videos and, and funny video content. Um, you know, it's becoming kind of our, our media channel. Uh, Instagram, you have hashtags and, and it's going to deliver more mails. It's more mobile as a platform. So each platform delivers a certain target audience and it's used in a certain way by that target audience. So your content needs to be native to that platform. You can't create one piece of content and have it work on all these different social media platforms. That's called evergreen content, by the way, where we write it once and it just keeps, we keep using it on all these different platforms. It's a nice idea. It doesn't always work because you have to, you have to tweak your content for each platform that you're on. Otherwise it doesn't fit. And then you want your content on the social media platforms to also be native in the sense that People are on social media to connect with their friends and, and engage and laugh and have a good time and be social. They don't want to be sold. So if you're a business and you're on social media, you should be just posting information that's cool, that's funny, 
that engages people with your brand, but you're not directly trying to sell. So uh, if you get a chance, look at Gary Vanderchuk's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. Uh, it's good stuff. It's been out for several years, but uh, he's got some excellent strategy about how to use social media. So on this slide, uh, you see this concept of curating content. Curating means how do I sift through all the stuff that's out there and figure out what to put on my site and to share with my target audience. That's the process of curating content. There's no lack of content these days. There's actually, in the information age, too much content and trying to navigate through and find out the stuff that's the best is the challenge. So that's what I mean by curating. What's the best? What's the, the best stuff that we want to put forward? So there's a life cycle to content, and that's what you see here in this infographic. You have to gather the information. You have to curate it. Uh, under different themes, like is this is this news? Is this something that's uh, you know keyword related? And you actually have to uh, either take that information that already exists and post it, and, and make sure that you're providing recognition of whose original content that is, or write your own stuff, publish and share, and repeat. So uh, this can become a lot of work. A challenge with content nowadays is you have to be careful, certainly if you're using images, if you're using stuff online with the intent of selling, then you better make sure that you're not using anything that is copyrighted or uh, not for commercial use. This tends to come up a lot with photography. The safest way to make sure that the photos that you use to promote your business and your pages is to shoot your own stuff, which is pretty easy to do nowadays. So that keeps you out of hot water. Now, if you go into Google Images, there's an advanced search feature, and you can go in there and select that you want stuff that's uh, um, open domain, basically, that doesn't have any, it's open for commercial use. Now, you'll get less quality stuff, because um, but <clears throat> you have to be careful about using other people's stuff to sell your stuff. If you're small, you can get away for it, with it for a while, but if you start becoming successful and bigger, then you're going to get a cease and desist letter and uh, possibly get sued. So uh, my girlfriend has a big online business, and um, she's received cease and desist letters, and she's given cease and desist letters for her own content. So, you know, in the online world, it's the Wild West, and everybody, it's global, and what they uh, are used to doing in China might be different from what they're used to doing in the US versus Africa. Everybody's on these computers and people steal stuff. People take your content and it's not even really something enforceable in other parts of the world. So that's just something you have to know is part of the game if you are selling information products in the online environment. Bottom line, content, you got to have some way of creating content on a regular basis, at least weekly. And the good news, this has created a whole new industry of jobs uh, around folks who write content. And you can go on Fiverr and you can go on Upwork and uh, see all types of freelancers there uh, that can help you with this kind of stuff. That was Fiverr, F-I-V-R, which you've probably heard about, and Upwork, U-P-W-O-R-K. Those are both good freelancing sites. So the next series of slides, I'm going to let you read through these on your own, but this is giving you some specific tips 
for different categories of informational products that you might be interested in selling online. So rather than me read each of these off to you, this first slide talks about health and wellness products and some tips you can use for this category. And then this slide is related to skincare and beauty products. Again, there's lots of folks in this space, but there's always room for one more. I had a student group last semester in 2017 that pitched uh, an on a, a waterproof makeup and how to apply it and a bunch of videos. And there is a need for a product like that. Women want to look good, whether they're at the pool or at the beach. And there's professional people. If you're in Cirque du Soleil, then you have a need for waterproof makeup. So uh, I thought it was an interesting business idea and they had some really good content related to that. So here's tips in that category. Travel and information products related to travel. We've seen a big growth in this category. So lots of tips here. Jewelry and makeup. Content tips. And then some more some more general content tips. How often should you post? Well, initially you should post daily, even more than once a day if you can. So think about when your audience will be watching. Are they working? Uh, and spread your posts throughout the day. Morning and evening are best. And there's a tool called Hootsuite. You can look this up, Hootsuite.com, which allows you to build a whole bunch of content and then schedule it for delayed release, if you will. And they can push out on multiple platforms. So Hootsuite is a wonderful tool that a lot of online businesses use. So we know that content's important. It's impossible to keep writing your own content. Even the most creative and dynamic person is gonna run out of ideas at some point. So uh, places where you can look for content, you can look at competitors and what are they writing about. You can certainly search on YouTube. There's aggregator sites where they pull together content from a lot of different sources, mashable.com, all top dig. So there's lots of ways to get content. The trick is to curate it and make sure that it fits your audience, and that you put your own personal tweak on it so that it's not a direct lift from somebody else's site. The best content is the content you create on your own, certainly when it comes to pictures. And you can post something more than once on this last bullet point here. So it's OK to recirculate something and bring it back. You just don't want to do it too often and too frequently. So when you think about content for a social media site, you know, for example, Facebook and you're a business, you want to go and there's some wonderful tools on Facebook like retargeting where Facebook will take your uh, existing followers that you have and enable you to target to different ones rather than going to Facebook and say, I want this age and I want this gender and I want somebody with these activities and interests and opinions. Facebook can go and say, well, here's who you already have following you and we're happy to sell you more of those folks. Um, <clears throat> so that's a Facebook retargeting tool. Think about how can you add value to your followers? What types of content is useful to them? What type of problems are they trying to solve? And how can you help? So and how is it relevant to your products or business? You might have wonderful content, but if it doesn't tie back into how they should buy your stuff, then your content isn't directly serving you. So think about these things as you're focusing in on what content can you use for your social media platforms. Bottom line, as you've probably figured out, there's a lot to it when it comes to content. I apologize for this bright yellow font. Try as I could, I couldn't get this link color to change. So that's something I'm still fiddling with. But here's a bunch of sites that you can go to to find free content for your website. And I've put these links into two categories. This slide is all about words basically content that you can use 
to inspire your own content. And then the next slide gives you a search for images. As I mentioned before, as a cautionary note, you don't want to take other people's pictures. You don't want to just use a picture and assume it's okay if you're using it on your site. It's not okay, and it will catch up with you sooner or later. And it is so easy to avoid this mistake. So you can do a Creative Commons search. Google Image, as I mentioned in previous slides, has an advanced search option where you can search for pictures and images that are free for commercial use. So do not use copyrighted pictures for the marketing of your own business. And the safest thing to do is to shoot your own photography. That's it, my friends. So we top lined some of the different social media platforms. And we also went deeper into content, specific tips you can use, and sources where you can find content, understanding how important good content is to your digital advertising efforts. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.